Let's talk about compensation in tech. At this point, it's pretty well known that software engineers can get really well paid. In this video, I want to explain how that is and how you can benefit. The total compensation for a good software engineer can be north of half a million dollars a year. I worked at Meta for four and a half years before I quit to start Taro, but I can tell you on my team, there were actually quite a few people who had that level of compensation, 500K a year or more. For US-based tech companies, there are four primary components to your compensation. Your base salary, your signing bonus, performance bonus, and equity. And there's also a fifth category, which is a catch-all, basically benefits and perks. But the two that really ratchet up your compensation if you work in tech are your performance bonus and your equity. And those are the things I wanna talk about in more detail in this video. The first two are pretty straightforward. The base salary refers to the annual salary that you receive from the company, typically paid out bi-weekly. Your salary is consistent and risk-free, which means that you can reliably expect that you're gonna have some cash show up in your bank account every two weeks. But because it's the oldest and most well-known form of compensation by far in tech and in other domains, I think people often over-index on salary and they neglect the other important forms of compensation. Next is the sign-on bonus, which is a one-time payment you get when you join the company, typically just as a sweetener to compel you to sign the offer, or sometimes it can be used as a way to make up the difference if you're leaving behind a bonus or uh, equity vesting at your old company. Usually you're entitled to the sign-on bonus only if you stayed at the company for a minimum length of time, like 12 months or 18 months. And if you leave before that, it's gonna be prorated. And because it's a one-time payment, the sign-on bonus can actually become quite substantial. So for example, back when I got an offer from Facebook, my signing bonus was in the six figures. And at some point, if you all are interested, I'm happy to share the exact numbers and all the offers I got. So now let's talk about the two other forms of compensation in tech, which not as many people are aware of, and these can actually become really meaningful. The first is the performance bonus. Performance bonuses are referred to as incentive-based compensation, which basically means that you'll get more of this bonus if you perform well. It's an incentive for you to exceed expectations relative to what your manager or team had decided for you. Generally, you're gonna have a baseline level of bonus that you can expect, and depending on how you perform, what level you are, and how the company did, that can actually go up or down. To make this concrete, here's how Meta and Google actually do performance ratings and how that will ladder up to a actual bonus payout that every employee will get. At Meta, every performance cycle, you'll get a review from your manager. From the worst, it'll be meet some expectations, which means that you're really not doing well at all. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have RE, which means it redefines expectations, which means like you're killing it, you're doing everything and, and more. And then Google will have an analogous system. And so what's interesting is the distribution, right? As you'd expect, the bottom five to 10% of people are gonna get the lower ratings and then 30 to 40% in those middle buckets. And then the top few percent of engineers will get that top rating. Every company is gonna have some sort of evaluation where they're gonna bucket engineers in a, in a rating, one through five or some acronym like Meta or Google uses. And so this is the output of the performance review system. Every individual engineer is gonna get that rating and then that will be used to compute how much bonus you get. And in particular, it will be used to compute the bonus multiplier. So depending on how well you did, you're gonna get a correspondingly higher or lower bonus. And finally, the other dimension here is that the amount of bonus you expect will also go up by level, right? So if you're a new grad engineer, you might expect like a 10% bonus. So if you have a $100,000 salary, then the expectation is that you'd get a 10K bonus. But if you are a director, right, like an L8 equivalent, then your bonus expectation is 30% of your salary. So not only does your salary go up, obviously your salary will go up every time you get promoted, percent bonus that you get will also go up. So you kind of win on both fronts. So for example, if you are a staff or principal engineer, it's totally reasonable for you to make 250K a year at one of these big tech companies. And then if you outperform as per the rating system we just talked about, it's actually not that hard to imagine that you could get a 100K bonus annually. And finally, equity. Equity is the main reason why compensation in a tech company is so much higher than other fields or other companies that don't give out equity. It's because as you become more and more senior, the equity that you get, the ownership in the company that you get will start to actually dominate your pay. The fact that tech companies give pretty substantial equity to rank and file employees and not just executives makes a really big difference in compensation. For example, I looked at the data from General Motors, which is you know this old 100 plus year auto company, which is not a tech first company. And so for, for them, a director of engineering at General Motors will typically make around $280,000 a year in total compensation, which is great. But a mid-level or senior engineer at a big tech company could 
probably make the same or even more than that, which is weird because what that means is someone with two to three years of experience could go to Google or Meta and make the same as a director of engineering at General Motors who has been working on that job and climbing the ranks for literally 15 or 20 years. This graph illustrates it pretty well, I think. At a traditional company, the majority of your compensation will be in, in salary. If you're in a tech company, it's going to be still primarily in salary, but a meaningful amount in, in stock. And as soon as you get to the senior plus levels, the majority of your compensation will start to become in stock options or RSUs. The innovation of giving equity to employees is actually pretty recent. Only 13.1% of employees actually have ownership in the companies that they work at. There are generally two ways that companies give out equity. Number one is options, and second is RSUs, or restricted stock units. The first is a stock option, which is an option to buy the stock of the company at a set price, which is predetermined. There are some tax advantages to using options because now you can have long-term capital gains, but there is a risk because you have to actually pay money out of pocket to exercise the option. Options are popular among startups, but at larger companies, you'll get RSUs, or stock units. And the idea of a stock unit is that you're basically being gifted a share in the company. And the number of shares that you get is established when you join the company. So for example, if you get $400,000 in a Google equity grant, an RSU grant, and let's say that Google doubles in value in the next two years, then that same equity grant is now worth 800K. So you benefit from the upside of the company growing. There's also a notion of vesting for your equity, which basically means when are you entitled to actually get the benefit of the equity that was granted to you. And so what typically will happen is a four-year equity grant with a one-year cliff. And so here's what that looks like. If you leave the company at 10 months or 11 months, you get no equity. But then when you hit the 12-year mark, you get one-fourth of the equity grant. That's the standard. And then every month or every quarter thereafter, you will get either 1 16th or 1 48th of the grant up until the four-year mark. Going back to the Google example, if someone told me that they had a $400,000 equity grant, then most people would expect that that meant in year one, they would unlock 100K of that. And then in subsequent years, 100K up until year four. Some companies will have back dated vesting, which means that you might have 10, 10, 40, 40 as the vesting schedule, but it really depends on the company. And usually 25% each year is the standard. And finally, one more note about equity, which I think lower paying companies might also use is something called the ESPP, Employee Stock Purchase Plan. And basically what that means is uh, an employee is able to purchase a stock at a discount. So you might say, um, every employee can purchase up to $10,000 worth of company stock at a 15% discount. And so you basically get $1,500 of free value if you're willing to put in 10K of your own money into the stock. I found that any company that offers a stock purchase plan is not going to be paying top of market. The equity is a really big deal for tech employees because I think it has made a huge difference in how much we all take home. There's actually a really interesting lawsuit that many of the tech workers filed in 2014 about um, how Steve Jobs at Apple and Eric Schmidt at Google and Paul Adelini at Intel agreed to keep compensation artificially low for these employees. What really changed was actually Facebook. So Facebook came out of the scene in 2005 and it grew rapidly. It had a ton of hype, ton of VC backing and a ton of money. And so Mark Zuckerberg basically came in and said, hey, I don't want to play by these rules. I'm going to poach whoever I want and I'll pay them top of market. I'll pay them significantly more than what they are getting at these big established companies. And so starting in the early 2010s, you really started to see the beginnings of bidding wars for really talented engineers at these top companies. And so I really do think that Mark Zuckerberg actually had a pretty huge impact on raising the average compensation for engineers in Silicon Valley. Compensation isn't the most important thing in the world, of course, but I do think it's important to at least have the awareness of how pay works in tech as you are evaluating a job or a career decision. Neville Ravikant has a saying that money doesn't buy happiness, but it does give you freedom. And I think a big thing about having a well-paying job is that it gives you optionality. So you have the potential to explore a bunch of different things and you have a lot more opportunity to find happiness that way. I hope that was interesting and you learned a bit more about how compensation can get so high at these top tech companies. If you're interested in a high context community for tech career discussions, join the app that I'm building called Tara. Join Tara.com. I'll leave a link for it in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.